favor with your assurance that please be with us Lord and you know that I am very unworthy to speak thy word Lord please you use me as an instrument to fill the hearts of sickness Lord please be with us this short way we ask in the name of our loving Lord Jesus Christ Amen. Uh, let's begin our sermon by talking about uh, famine. Uh, do you have an experience of having famine? But uh, do you ever gone through with the famine? No. I think uh, in Bangladesh, no. Uh, it was in uh, 1992 or in 1780, around that time. But recently we are not facing famine. But in third world country, they had famine. Especially in Africa, there are famine. So there is a story, or not? it is not a story, but it's a real fact. In 1994, in the continent of Africa, there was a famine. And usually United Nations, they set up a camp for providing food those who are undernourished and those who are those who have famine and they are not there those who don't have food really. And there was a little boy and who was about to die for having famine. And when this little boy heard about the United Nations food camp, and that little boy, he used to go to the food camp. And by the way, and there was a vulture waiting to snatch that boy to have its breakfast. It's very shocking story events that took place in 1994 in the continent of Africa. And this picture was captured by Kevin Carter on the famous photographer in 1994 and it was very famous. But you know, the, the, uh, Kevin Carter, he died for, uh, for depression in 60 days for this picture. He was having very depression of famine because he saw the famine really. But now, I'm not talking about the famine that happened in the continent of Africa or in Bangladesh or in India, but I'm talking about a famine that is your life and my life. We may think our refrigerators are full of fruits. We have abundance of bread in our home. But who knows? We may have famine in our spiritual life. And today, through the truth, chapter 1 and 2, we are going to look unto this famine. And we are trying to come out from Moab and we are try, trying to go to Bethlehem. So if you have Bible with you, you can uh, uh, please open with me uh, Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1 verse 1 says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges grew, there was a famine in the land. So in the Bible says, when judges took, there was the famine. So there was not any kings, but there were judges, and that time there was famine. So the question arises, where was the famine? If you go through uh, Ruth chapter 1, then we can find out the famine. Where is the famine? Bethlehem. What is the famine? 
Bethlehem. Do you know? Do you know the meaning of Bethlehem? Let us do a little bit of Hebrew here. Beth. In the Bible, there are many places that we can find Beth. Bethlehem, Bethsaida, Bethany. There are many places in the Bible we find Beth. So, what is the meaning of Beth? House. House. Thank you. And Lehem is the bread. So, if you come to uh, Bethlehem, means house of bread. So, it is very controversial. See here, Bethlehem is the house of bread, but instead of having bread, there was a famine. So, in the house of God, in the house of fruits, the house of bread, there is a famine. And see here, a Christian family living in the house of bread, and now they are going out of house, house of bread, and they are shifting their house well from Bethlehem to Moab, almost uh, 75 miles. Distance is almost uh, 75 miles. So, see, this Christian family, I can say this Adventist family, they shifted their family from house of bread to, you know the meaning of Moab. Moab is the place, it's a dirty place where we, can, we will wash our face in the kitchen or sink. So, this family, they shifted from house of bread to house of dust. So what happens? When we shifted our family from God to this bad place, that situation, what happens to us? People think in the house of bread there is a famine, there is a problem, there is a, many things happening. But what say? Bible says. Okay, if you have Bible, let us, let us go to the Bible. So this family, how many members they have? How many members they have? They have uh, four members. Four members. So, uh, Kilian, Mahalan, then Elimelech, and his wife. So four people they shifted from Bethlehem to Moab. So what happened? So when they shifted, they are living in there and husband died. So when we leave the church, when we leave Christ, when we go for another life, we lost our husband. That's me. Husband is a priest in the family. When we shifted our life from God to Satan, we are dead. It could be spiritually, it could be physical. But when we shifted, when we leave our God, that's me. We are dying. So this family when they left the house of bread, when they left Jesus Christ, when they left, when they left the word of God, they went to another nation. Bible says, don't go to Moabites, don't mingle with the Ammonites, the Midianites. And when they left and when they joined with them, husband, the priest of the family died. Then the two sons, Mahalan and Kilian, they got married with two Moabites. It's very amazing. Bible says especially two nations, Ammonites and Moabites. Please avoid those, avoid them. Do you know where they have came from? Ammonites and Moabites? You know, uh, the story of Lot and their two daughters, they have an illegal relationship with their father and 
you know the details about them. So Bible says, don't go there, don't start them, don't mingle with them because you are peculiar, you are special people, you are chosen people, you are people of God. Stay in the house of prayer, don't go to the place of Moab. So when they left to Moab, two sons died. Sons are fruits of the family. So when we leave our God, when we let the word of God, when we let the Bible, fruits dies. Husband dies. So Bible says, don't leave the church. Bible says, God says, don't leave me. Be connected with me. So do you have family? Are you thinking here that oh we have financial challenges, we have emotional challenges, we have family problems, we have many discouragements. Bible says, whatever you have, stay in the Bethlehem. Though here is famine, though here is no food, stay with Jesus. Be connected with, with Him. No need to go, no need to shift it for foreign lands. I have appointed you to be here. First, feast, no problem. If we have famine, no problem. If we have challenges, no problem. But be connected with me. Because I will say, I am the living bread. So if you have the word of God, if we have Jesus with you, there is no problem actually. Because Bible is a source of assurance. You will get everything here. Don't migrate from Bethlehem to Moab. Then it will cost you miles to come back. And this Christian family, they shifted. And what happens? They lost their two sons, they lost their parents or father. But Ruth, and let's talk about uh, Naomi. Do you know that Naomi meaning of Naomi? Blessed one. Naomi is the blessed one. Be humble to God. He prayed to God, God please you help me. And he and she had a good news. He had a good news. The good news is that he heard now God has been providing fruit in the Bethlehem. So Bible says now God is providing food in the Bethlehem. So then Naomi called her daughter-in-laws and said, let me read from the Bible, uh, Ruth chapter 1. Uh, let me begin with 14. Ruth chapter 1 verse, let us begin with 14. It says, and they lifted, lifted up their voice and wept again and Arpa kissed her mother-in-law and but Ruth claims unto her. Then verse 15 says, verse 15 says, And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people, and unto her gods, return thou after thy sister-in-law. So here is that, here is, uh, let us think about here. Uh, Ruth and uh, another sister-in-law, uh, Orpa. Do you know the meaning of Orpa? Orpa is stubborn. Stubborn. And she left, she lived, left the church. She went to her gods. Sometimes we are we used to come from another church. We used to come from another situation, another territory. But when problem comes, we let. This Orpa, she let God. He had 
10 years experience of living with bread. She had 10 days working more for 10 years. But Orpha, she left when problem comes, she left. Let us not be like Orpha, stubborn one. Be humble to God. God is going to bless you. But Ruth said, let us look unto us, verse 16, it says, um, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave uh, me or to return from following after me. Following after me, uh, then for whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou goest, I will go. go. And thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. So here, uh, Ruth said, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will go. If you die, I will be there. Only death can separate us from you and me. Nothing else. See, this Ruth, she came from Moab, she accepted the word of God, she heard the word of God and said there is nothing that can separate me from the word of God. Dear believers in Christ, let us embrace the word of God. Let us take, let us take this assurance and say like her, Wherever I will go, I will go. Wherever you go, I will go with you. Your God is my God. Your Lord is my Lord. Your Jesus is my Jesus. It is not a problem where you have come from. Sometimes I feel very jealous in him. I cannot take, I cannot tell like you. I am third generation Seventh-day Adventist. Our second generation Adventist. It doesn't matter of your genealogy, but it's a matter of how you have been connected with him. That is important. Are you connected with him today? As Ruth said, wherever you go, I will go. Because Bible is alive. There is a famine, but God visited. And so what happened? So Orpa left the church. Orpa went to the to her gods. But Ruth stayed with the living bread. So when we stay in the living bread, God blesses abundantly. So they went to the house of bread. Now they have a handsome, I think it's a handsome salary they have. They have well house, they have lands, they have crops, everything they have. One thing is lacking, that is husband and God also blessed the Ruth, the Moabites and God richly blessed her and Ruth was blessed by God and God gave her voice and you know Jesus Christ born in their house so the message is this don't leave the word of God. Don't go away from God. Don't go away from territory of God. Don't lift the God, but let the God. Don't let the God, but raise his word and he is going to raise you up. Because the Bible says, Whoever comes to me, I will no wise cast him out. So, dear believers, dear Christians, let us 
be connected with you. And God is going to richly bless you. And He's going to be filled with blessings, filled with fruits, not famine. May God richly bless you. Thank you very much.